Hi, I'm Don, and this is The Hobbyist Geek. Welcome back, y'all. Today, we have another user request. Uh, I'd like to thank Papa and Spirit Wolf 612 for his request to do the Metal Earth Wolverine. Uh, this looks pretty cool. Um, can't wait to see what we get into, so why don't we just take a look at the packaging and see what we're in for. So here is the packaging for Metal Earth Wolverine. And I mean, this guy looks pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Um, I can already see a few problem areas. Um, given the size of the packaging, this is going to be a smaller figure, probably more in line with the Iron Man and War Machine that I did, uh, as opposed to the Star Wars Premium Series stuff. So scale is definitely going to be a factor here. Uh, you can also tell that uh, the nose here is going to be minuscule, and he's got these little like brace bracer things along the claws, which are also going to be tiny so I can see where those are going to be some problem areas uh, the head aside from the nose actually looks like it'll be fairly easy to do uh, it looks like it's you know just a couple of pieces here uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem obviously we'll see if that's true and it looks like the thighs are inset into the boots here so might have a little bit of an issue there simply because of the scale we're going to be working with some really tiny pieces here on the back you can see we've got uh three sheets of metal oh this says it's only a five out of ten difficulty so maybe my fears are misguided uh, maybe this will be easier than i expect but well mm, Oh, 45 pieces, so not particularly massive. Cool, let's get this thing open. All right, so here are the sheets that we get in the packaging. Uh, we, this is gonna be the base, that's clear enough. Uh, you can see, here's the nose, which I'm gonna be perfectly honest, that's actually much bigger than I had thought it would be based on the packaging. These little bits here, I'm guessing, are those braces for the claws that I was thinking of. Looks like these might be the claws themselves. A uh, little uh, triple threat there. Hmm. It's, this packaging is too small, I can't really tell, but I don't see on the packaging where these tabs here are gonna go. Clearly they go inside uh, this area of the claw, but I don't see them folded down in there. Maybe maybe that's a Photoshop thing, or maybe the picture's just too small for me to see. I don't know. All right. Um, some nice big pieces here for the torso. That looks pretty cool. I think we've got some leg down here as well. Maybe the crotch. No, that's not the crotch. Crotch is blue. This has got to be the crotch. We'll find out. And some more pieces here. Arms. Uh, I'm guessing these are the boots. I got to tell you, I mean, this coloring, this paint job on this, this is pretty exceptional. Even the silver in the uh, on the sprue looks like it's been painted. Um... Seriously, that, uh, that just really looks kind of textured and painted, even for the unused metal, which is actually kind of cool. I like that. Um, all right, cool. And then we've also got two sets of instructions. So uh, for anyone new to Metal Earth Builds, these instructions come with uh, a couple of basics uh, at the beginning. Right here is your sheet list. Now, not all Metal Earth models do this, but these ones 
actually have the letter designation printed on them. Not all of them do, which is cool. And then of course, you've got the numbers of the pieces which will fall in line as we go through the instructions. Over here, you'll notice some designators. This is very important. This, you see a dark E like this? That means the painted side. NE means the unpainted side. These circles, uh, let's see if we can find one. There's one, okay. I mean the tab needs to be folded. You really need to follow that. Uh, there are occasions where it doesn't matter, but most of the time when it says folded, it's uh, in order to prevent tabs from sticking out and possibly causing a, uh, a safety issue when you're holding it, or uh, it's a space issue. If you don't fold it, then when you go to put the next piece on, it won't fit properly. So pay attention to that. When you see the little triangle, um, which uh, I don't seem to see any here on this first page, but if you do see the triangle, that's where you do a quarter turn uh, twist to make it nice and tight. Uh, Metal Earth is very good at actually numbering the pieces in the order they're used. So, you know, one, two, three, so on and so forth. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, now you can see this is C1. It will be the very first part. So, we got sheet C here. And part one is designated as this. So it looks like we're gonna be working on his torso. Uh, I actually have had some people in the comments mention that they're having difficulty removing the pieces from the sprue. Make sure you've got a good pair of snips. And when you take a look at the pieces, and I hope this is showing up on camera properly, you can see these little triangle bits that are actually physically connected to the piece. And what you want to want to do is get your snips in there and just cut it short like that. Do not mistake those triangle bits for the tabs. Okay, I know those get real close to the metal. You can see like that. Okay, don't mistake them for the tabs. There's another little triangle. Snip that one out. And just make sure you get all of them. And the piece should come right out. Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the pieces out for this first stage, and then we'll get started on the build. All right, uh, before we kick off step one, tools I'll be using here are some needle nose pliers, some flat nose pliers, and I've got my round stock here. Um, I'll put the link to the kit that I use in the description. Um, but you can, you, you don't have to use that, of course, just any needle nose, any flat nose, and whatever round stock you happen to have handy should be fine. And we're gonna kick things off with the lower torso right here. And what we're gonna wanna do is kind of round this out a little bit. And then we're going to take these two tabs here. We're going to bring them in to here. So get out my round stock. You can use your thumb on a piece this big. Um, and I may end up doing so, but I like to use the round stock at least to get things started. And let's get this thing moving and we're just going to manipulate the metal bring it into a curved shape as best we can remember at these stages perfection is not the goal uh, you just want to be gentle with it you don't want to bust the metal just want to get it started. Things will fall into place. Trust me. Uh, 
All right. Now, to get these attached, I'm going to take these tabs here and bend them down about 90 degrees. Give or take. Okay. Then we're gonna bring this in low and push those tabs in. Just like that. Put those tabs in place, take our tweezers back out. We're just gonna fold them around and pinch it shut. All right, and these gaps here, you can uh, take care of just by folding the, the metal down a little bit. All right. And look at that, we got a little bit of a torso. How cool is that? All right, next up, we're gonna take part two here. We're gonna try to shape it into uh, a back plate. Now this is gonna be interesting. I've never actually seen a back quite like this. Um, right here on the bottom, you might notice that there are six slots, okay? Those are gonna go into these six tabs to hold it in place. Uh, so spacing here is gonna be kind of important. Um, we're definitely gonna use our round stock to try and manipulate the shape and get it as close to that as we can. Um, hmm. I have a feeling a lot of the shaping on this is going to come as we do the assembly. Just, just a feeling. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty close. All right, now there are two ways you can do this. You can bend these tabs outwards and then fold them down once you've inserted them into the holes. If you do that, you're gonna end up with the silver tabs showing on the back. Um, but that is the easier way of doing this. The other way, and the way actually designated in the instructions, is to bend all of the tabs inward, and then you'll be covering up the seam a little bit, and making things a little, you know, just that little bit prettier. So that's what we're gonna try for, at least for our first attempt here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at this, you know what, I'm gonna start on the edge and just kind of work my way through getting these tabs in. Let's see how this works. That's one. Ooh. and if you want oh man that, that second one if you want you can actually fold the tabs down as you get them in just to help give it a little stability and hold it in place a little better that is totally your call I'm gonna see if I can't get all six of these in first and go from there Sorry guys, it's really hard to see this black tab here and get it lined up properly. There we go. And one tab left. And I just pulled the black one out. That sucks. All right. Whew, that took forever to do, but I got it, and with the tabs in place, you wanna get your tweezers in there, do a nice little fold and a pinch. Do it for all six. 
All right. Now you may notice, of course, that this doesn't look like much of a torso. That's because these sides are going to have to uh, widen out a little bit. Look at that. Just give it a little push to make it just a little bit wider. And things start coming together a little better. We've got our seam, which is never really going to go away, but it's mostly hidden. And we're just going to use our fingers and the round stock to kind of round out some of the bits that may have gotten smushed during our manipulations there. So you get a nice little circle there. Awesome. Ready for the next stage. All right, next up, we're going to finish off the back here. We've got part three. This is going to want to have a little bit of a curve like this. And you're going to want to fold this down just a little bit. Kind of like that. Okay. Now the bottom of this has four slots. And what do you know? The top of the back piece we just did has four, four tabs. Again, uh, you could bend these out and down for the easy route, or you can bend them in as is appropriate per the instructions and for a cleaner build. A little something like that. And then we just want to slot all four of those tabs into these holes. And then we're going to fold them down. All right, so now we've got his back. We may need to bend it a little more to get it to fit just correctly, just right. And we're about ready for the next stage. Now the next one's gonna be the fun one. That is taking this piece and connecting this. And as you can see, there's definitely a space issue. So you're gonna probably have to squeeze it a bit. Now we've got three slots here and we've got two slots on top and two in the middle. Okay. Um, we're gonna be using, yeah, all of them. <laughs> So over here, you got three tabs on the back. You've got two tabs on e one on either side and these don't touch yet. These are gonna be for later. And then two tabs on the front. Now, a couple different ways of going about this. Um, the way you're supposed to do it, of course, is bending all of this in. like so. And these will probably have to go a bit more than 90 degrees. And then you're gonna to wanna to hook them through here, here, and here. There we go. Now, the instructions say fold, and I think that's be, oh, looks like I did not actually get this 
third one into the slot. I thought I had. There we go. Fold. So that's what I'll do for now. But given their positioning, I doubt very seriously we're going to run into any spacing issues. Um, so uh, I think a twist would probably work well here as well. That sentence sounded weird. Well here as well. Ah. <clears throat> now for the fun part. We got two tabs here and we got two slots. Two tabs here, two slots. Uh, I'm gonna work on one side and then do the other. And that is where, ah, where'd my round stock go? There it is, okay. And I kinda wanna round off the top. I mean, the shoulder shouldn't be like a robot, you know? Um, so I'm gonna round this off a little bit. We'll do one side and then we'll do the other. Start with the central tab and then the outer tab. Get your tweezers in there to help out. We'll do the other side. All right. And with all of that in place, you can take your tweezers here and, you know, pull some of the metal out a little bit on either side. You know, just uh, do a little reshaping, okay? Um, now's the time to do it. You don't want to try and do that later. So, We'll uh, take some round stock, try to round this out. This is obviously where the arm is going to go. And the last bit, according to the instructions for step one, is you have these four tabs here on either shoulder. And they're all going to have to come outward. So let's get them bent out a little bit so they are out of the way. And it actually makes our reshaping efforts a little easier as well. So. Look at that. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Don't think it's quite perfect, but uh, we shall certainly see. Um, kind of want to bend this in a little bit where the neck is. Just to flatten that out a little bit. All right. Here we go, we have a nice little torso and step one is done. How incredible is this? And here we are for step two. We have parts five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, we're gonna kick things off with part five here. And we're going to, um, going to start with the back half, just the straight flesh colored portion of this. Take tweezers and this tab on the end, I'm going to bend that down about 90 degrees. Get out our round stock, start rounding this puppy out.
And as with some of the others, you wanna fold this in just a little bit more than uh, you would normally do so that you can fold this down and get that tab into that slot. Just like that. With the tab in, take your tweezers, apply a little pressure and fold that over. And you can get your round stock in there again if you wish to round it out just that little bit more from your manipulations. Then we're gonna take the forearm here. I'm gonna bend all of these tabs in. Now, the part that'll go to the wrist, don't touch those tabs. And then we'll round it off again. start with this side the longer side that's got the two tabs basically gonna fold it in and pop those tabs into the appropriate slots just like that with the tabs in there get your tweezers in and push them in flat same over here Beautiful. Now, for the fun part. What we're gonna try to do here, I'm gonna flip this down a little bit. We got three tabs here, two here, one there. We've got three slots. And when we fold this over, we want all three of those tabs to fit into the appropriate slots. Now what I'm doing here with my thumbnail is just kind of pushing this tab in a little bit more to try and get it to line up appropriately. Bingo, all three are in. And we'll get uh, some tweezers in there, fold that one over. And then coming in from this side, we'll fold these as well. I don't know, I'm trying to focus this thing, but uh, we're, we're dealing with some small pieces here, but so I don't know how well that's showing up in there, but those tabs are all folded in nice and neat. And again, if you need to, get your round stock and round out the pieces just a little bit. to uh, pull out a slightly smaller round stock for this. And there we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to take part six here. And we're going to start with the side that's got all the tabs. Um, Yeah. This one's gonna be a little more interesting to do. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's uh, get these tabs on the inner side here. We'll get all those folded down. And same with these two on the end. Just like that. What we're gonna do is 
Yeah, we got three holes here, three slots, and we've got our three tabs. And where is this going to line up at precisely? Okay. So, my take on this, and I hope I'm right because the instructions are not particularly clear here. is that this tab here will be on this lower slot. So if you're holding it in this orientation so that the cut is kind of sliding towards the right, okay, the tab next to these, to the double tabs end, is gonna go on that lower slot. Uh, I'm gonna start with the other side though the back end. We're going to kind of bring this around. Notice I'm just using my thumb and fingers to round it off as opposed to uh, the round stock. Makes it a little easier to see what I'm doing. If you need to, feel free to get in there with your tweezers before you've got all of the tabs in. Just fold this up so that it stays put. As I did right there. We'll go around, we'll get the other tabs into their slots. Don't forget the two ends here. I'm gonna go into those two slots right there. All right, now the remaining two tabs on this here and here, actually the twist on the inside, but I did fold these over. Um, so uh, just clearance is an issue. Clearance is definitely an issue here. Not much to be done. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to want to fold these tabs in like this. And fold this one down just like that. You're going to want to swing this in inside and hook those tabs in that way. It'll feel like you're over bending because you are. But We'll get the job done. Now the instructions do say fold these tabs, but there's not gonna be a clearance issue here. I'm just gonna twist them. So we're good there. This is where things are gonna get interesting. I'm gonna fold this flap in a little more than I probably should so I can get this in. Hook bottom tab in just like that and then we'll fold this out to match twist this all right and with that in place round stock again Let's round this thing out best we can. All right, there you go. Ready for the next bit. 
Okay, before I get started on the next bit, I don't know if this is showing up on camera or not, but definitely know we got it in the right uh, place because there is a vein painted along the back here and it splits off right about here and it matches up perfectly with these little strands over here. So that is another way to ensure that you've got those slots in the right or excuse me, those tabs in the right slots. So now we're gonna take this bit, this is seven. Do it a little bit differently in that we're going to kind of assemble it here before attaching it to the arm. So on the flesh side, on the inside, there are three tabs. We're gonna bend those down. We get our round stock, round it off a bit. And then we're gonna fold this down and get those tabs in. We're just gonna assemble this bit right now. And again, uh, instructions say fold. So we'll go ahead and fold. Since clearance is not an issue here. Same for the other side with the two tabs. With those tabs in, we'll fold these over as well. Look at that. Now, we've got these three tabs here on the flesh side. And when you take a look at the arm, you've got three slots here, and then one side only has one slot. We're gonna ignore that slot for now. We just focus on these three. And that is where these three tabs are gonna go. So we'll fold these in. Get them into those slots and get them uh, folded over and tied together. You know what? I'm actually going to give these a twist. At least that one. There we go. Get the heck, we'll twist this one too. All right, look at that. Now, <clears throat> this is gonna attach eh, something like this uh, when we're ready, but we're not quite there yet. Um, first things first, I'm gonna take part eight. Now this is a very small part, so it's kind of hard to tell, but you've got a circular portion here and then it's kind of rectangled off with a slot on either side and then you've got this one little outlier piece okay making sure that the painted side is facing the arm you're going to want to line this up so that that outlier piece is facing the lower portion here, because that's like the bottom front of the hand. And around the circular interior is where you'll put those four tabs. There we go. Oh, and it's just not showing up well, but all four tabs right there. You know what, I'm gonna try something, one second. All right, hopefully, I've turned the light on for the camera, hopefully that'll help out here. Uh, we got uh, all four tabs in there and it won't focus. And 
right here is where that little outlier is. So in this orientation, that would be where the hand, you know, the bottom front of the hand is. So, so I know I've got it in the right place. All four of these tabs can be twisted. When you twist them, be careful not to get them towards the outside because that's where the fist is going to go. Okay. You want to fold them uh, just towards the interior, much like this, just to be safe. Perfectly understandable. And in fact, that is what I'm going to do. Perfect. And that finishes step two. We can move on to step three. All right, here we are with the parts we need for step three. We have three part nines, part 10, and three part 11s. For these part nines, these are the claws, obviously. Um, taking a look at this end of the claw, you can see there are three little triangle points, okay? That is the business end of the claw, okay? So this is gonna be the side that attaches to the fist. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take one side in your tweezers and just kind of push down till it's perpendicular. Curve this thing in just enough to line that tab on the shaft with the slot like that. And then we'll fold it down and fold this one in much the same way. Get that tab into its slot. Fold it down. All right. Now we can uh, actually fold the little points on the claws in to make an actual point. So it's ready to rock and roll. And on this side, the very end here is another tab, and that tab has to be folded down about 90 degrees. Okay, so you should have something that looks like that on the end. And here, you can pull out your fist. Okay. And you've got three sets of holes here. And that is where these are going to go. So I wish I had a better camera and I could focus better here, but there are four slots that are three of them basically form a U. You got two vertical and one horizontal. And then there's a fourth horizontal or vertical one up towards the top. You want the two in the center. So you've got the two, uh, vertical ones that are perpendicular in the middle there to uh, remain clear. And then these are to be twisted. Much like that. And does not want to stay put though. Uh, I have a feeling that's what these are for. So now that we've got this in, okay. And if you want, you can, uh, kind of close up the gap here to make it look more like a blade. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, fold these center tabs in a bit more too. 
There we go. That looks much better. And it's staying in place better too. Now, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for the other two, but before we get to that, let's take one of these puppies. Now, if you take a look, one side has just two lines as the design, the other has a bunch of striations. That's the inside, okay? Um, what we're gonna to wanna to do is roll this a bit. Now I'm gonna take the cone here, I'm gonna put it here, and I'm gonna apply pressure to both sides as evenly as I can to roll this out in semi-cone form. Okay, it did not work out as well as I'd hoped, but it did work out how I expected because of the size of the piece. So you may need to get your tweezers in there and help it along a little bit. Excellent. And with this rolled, the way you want it. You got the two tabs on the bottom and that is where those other two slots are going to come into place. So it's basically going to cover the end here and go into those slots. This paint is very reflective though. It's making it very difficult to see on both sides. Also worth noting, I am not folding the fist at this point. Definitely don't want to do that yet. Okay. When you've got both tabs in, uh, we're going to go ahead and twist these as well. So these are going to be twisted. Excellent. So that should be one done. Now you just want to repeat that for the other two. I'll be right back when I've finished it. Alrighty. Now that we've got all three claws in place, we're going to make a double fold. If you take a look at uh, this outlier piece here, the fold's gonna happen right where it meets. So one right here at about 90 degrees. Give or take. We are gonna have to round it out a little bit so that it matches just a little. And then one right here and we can fold this piece in to match as well. Go of another little fold right here and fold that in to match. There's a tab here and a tab here, a slot here and a slot there. We fold this down and just line up those tabs with those slots to get it all in place. There we go. With those tabs in, we're just going to fold them down and make them nice and flat. Just like that. We've got two slots, two tabs. I'm going to fold this down into there. There we go. 
and we will punch those down. Perfect. And there are a total of three tabs here on the bottom. And those are gonna line up with the three open slots here. This is where getting this to line up just right is so important. And with these in, these are gonna be twisted to ensure a nice firm hold. Just like that. Uh, line up your claws if you need to. And there you go. One of Wolverine's arms complete. And we are going to have to replicate all of this. So steps four and five are exactly the same as steps two and three. Uh, so no need to show you guys because well, I just did. So I'll be back as soon as that's done. Oh. Okay, and here we go. We've got two Wolverine arms ready to rock and roll. I've also pulled out the additional parts we'll need for step six. Uh, because we are now attaching the arms to the torso. And then we're gonna put on uh, the shoulder guards here. Um, before we get to the shoulder guards, let's get those arms on. Up in here, we've got four tabs and what do you know there are four slots uh, getting this on is going to be interesting though it's important to note the yellow on the arm goes on this top tab closest to the neck okay now for the tabs you're going to want to bend them outward a bit Try and align everything best we can. And then really it's just a matter of one at a time getting them in there. It's gonna require, you know, some finesse, uh, particularly considering all of these holes seem to be Uh, well, parallel, I suppose, to uh, the arm, so all going in opposite directions. Now, once you've got them in, here, I've got one in. I've got the top one in, so I'll show you what I'm doing here. You're just going to fold it towards the center of the torso. Fold it down flat. We're going to do the same for the rest. All right, and there you go. One done. Now you notice I got my finger up in here. Um, that's actually helping with uh, applying some pressure on the inside to ensure that the tab is fully out. Um, and you know, go back and just double check all of the tabs once you've got the last one in to make sure that they are all down nice and secure also important you've got two slots on the front you don't have to worry about those too much but these two on the back are on two different slices of the back here you're going to want to make sure that they're not folded over because you're going to need them here in a minute and uh, that takes care of one arm let me go ahead and take care of the other and i'll be right back all right both arms attached, ready for the next step. So basically what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna take our round stock. We're gonna give this thing a nice little curve for the shoulder. Um, by the way, 
don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but right in here there's an R, the other one has an L, R for right arm, L for left arm. That actually is important uh, because the tabs are not evenly spaced. So, it is what it is. And with the curve in, we're gonna wanna fold these tabs about 90 degrees in. Not like that. And those slots that I pointed out earlier, that's where these are gonna go. So, I'm gonna start with the back. Perfect. And I'm gonna have to get some uh, tweezers in. You can try to go in from the top. It'll be a little harder in my opinion. Or you can go in from the bottom. Now the instructions say to fold these. It's gonna be a lot easier to just twist them. And there's no point in folding at this point. Uh, it's not a clearance issue. Let's see if we can't get these tabs in. There, perfect. Now that we've got those tabs in, we'll fix them in. All right, look at that. One shoulder guard in place. We replicate that for the other one, and I will be right back. All right, look at that. That is beautiful. And we are done with step six and ready to move on. Okay, y'all, step seven has exactly one piece. That is the crown of his helmet or mask or hoodie or however you want to look at it. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, for this, everything's, you're going to want to have curves on everything, but a lot of that's going to come into play a little bit later. To kick things off, for the four tabs on this center piece, I'm going to want to bring those in. Okay, kind of like that. We'll do that for the other side. So you got something that looks like this. Now, you don't want a direct fold, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring the, this out. We want a kind of a curved fold here for the back and then we will roll this down and make sure that those tabs go into the proper slots because they're going to go into the slots along these curved edges go we're just gonna do them one at a time here when that when you get a tab in just fold it in towards the middle It'll make it a little easier to manipulate the rest okay Okay, so that's uh, one side done. And we're gonna do the same on the other. All right, look at that. Now, we've got two tabs here, and we've got two slots here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring these tabs up a bit. We're just going to push this thing in just like that. And again down here. Just like that, we'll fold these down too. Look at that. We will repeat the process on this side. Beautiful. And for finish, finishing touches, I'm gonna get in here. I'm just gonna kind of round off the outside and the edges and do what we can to make all of this line up a little better. Something like this. Look at that. All right. And we are ready for the next step. All right, here are the pieces we have for step eight. This is C20, A21, and A22. We're gonna deviate a little bit from the instructions because what the instructions want is to curve this, then you would curve this, attach the two together, put the nose on, and then we'll throw the helmet into the mix. <coughs> Personally, I don't think that's a very good idea. Uh, I think it's gonna make things harder than they have to be. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna shape the nose here first. You can see his nostrils there. We're gonna take the piece with the nostrils. We're gonna fold it underneath. Then we'll fold this using the yellow as a guide. And the other side as well to match. So you have something that looks like this with four tabs coming out the back. Those four tabs. I'm gonna go into the four slots right between the eyes on this. All right, so it should look like that. And on the back side, you're gonna wanna affix these. And in this case, you're definitely gonna wanna fold them, or at least the top ones. I'm gonna go ahead and fold them towards the inside so that they overlap. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. And we're going to take these tabs and fold them 90 degrees backwards. And we're going to fit them into the slots on the top of the mask here. You may have to curve a little bit to uh, get it all to fit. Not a problem, it's gonna be curved anyway. All right, look at that. And with all of this in place, now we'll do a little curve. To bring this back and make it look all neat. Look at that, it's pretty cool, huh? Now there's one tab here at the top. We're gonna to wanna to bring that puppy back. And there's a slot on the front of the helmet that it will slide into. And then we're gonna fold it the rest of the way down. See, I like 
this is this is why we should always do this stuff before we do the rolls. Um, that thing did not want to go in because I curved it a bit too much. So now that it is in, we can position it appropriately and curve this puppy around the helmet. Pretty much the way it's supposed to go. Okay, now this is an unstable piece right now because it's only got the one tab. So be careful with it. It's gonna wanna fall out, you don't want it to. Not yet. But obviously there's gonna be something that goes on the bottom here. We got two tabs here, we got some tabs along the edge that is gonna stabilize it. I'm guessing that'll be in the next stage. Uh, but that actually completes step eight. Okay, so we've got two parts for step nine, and we're gonna have to bring in the assemblies that we have built thus far. Um, this is A23, and this is A24. Uh, again, gonna go a little bit out of order, because what they want you to do is shape this first, and then do this. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, so we're going to take A24 here and we're going to roll it up. This is going to be his neck. Just want as close to a nice little perfect circle as we can get. All right. Now you notice one side, man, has tabs that are equidistant and one side has four tabs, but they're all towards the back. Okay, the one with the four tabs towards the back, that is uh, up. I guess would be the best way to put it. Now we're gonna take A23, and it's got tabs around the exterior, and then four tabs in a semicircle right there towards the back. And with the painted side facing A24, we're gonna wanna put those tabs in. Alrighty, and with all four tabs in, uh, we're going to twist, a little quarter twist, a little quarter twist, and same for the others. That is beautiful. Now, we're going to fold this down to match. Just like that. And this right here can come out straighter just a little bit. Okay. So this is this, Jesus, the focus on this. Move this stuff out of the way. Maybe it's trying to focus on that. Okay, so uh, this is his chin, back of the head. And we've got six tabs on here, 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 that match. <clears throat> and we're just gonna throw those in. Now the ones, these two here on the back, you're gonna wanna twist. The other four are folds. I'm gonna start at the back and work my way forward. Wow, oh, okay. I take it back. Uh, while these are supposed to be twisted, as per the instructions, they are getting in the way. So, I guess in addition to the twist, I'm going to fold them in. Get them out of the way here. Let's see if that gives me the clearance I need to get this done. Okay, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to edit this. Um, here's the deal. Okay, 
Uh, this backside does not look particularly good. Um, there's really nothing that could be done about it, unfortunately. Um, let's see if I can pull this a little bit. Uh. Yeah. Better than nothing. Now there's a reason the product shots don't show the back of his head, I suppose. Um, but you definitely want to get these back two done first. Okay. Now this section of the chin, you'll actually want to leave folded or, or an unfolded so that it's sticking out and get the back part of the chin tabs in first then fold this up to complete the look and when it's all done you can uh, you know do a little squeeze here and there to kind of match it up and fold the chin up a little more so you get something that looks like this which I mean I'll be the first to admit does look pretty cool I like it just absolute pain to get in but it's there and it looks good now you notice there are four tabs on the bottom here and what do you know four slots on the neck here so we're going to want to get those tabs into those slots then we're going to come up through the torso to twist them on hopefully after all that the tabs will line up fairly easily fingers crossed okay getting this in it looks like getting the front two in first is actually preferable uh, when I did it from the back side it did not like that at all let's get these tabs twisted shall we all right and there we go head attached upper half of the body complete and we are ready to begin the next section all right here are the parts we need for step 10 we're going to start construction on the legs we have c25 c26 and b27 Kicking things off with C25. Uh, what we're gonna wanna do, take these tabs on the end, fold them down like so, and we'll get our round stock out again. We're just gonna round it off. Don't touch this top half yet. Okay. Now, as before, once it's rounded, you're going to want to put these two tabs into here and fold it shut. All right, we'll get the round stock back in. Round it off a little better. If you got any flat spots, flat areas, anything like that. All right. Now, <clears throat> if you want, you can prep this a little bit and take these tabs and fold them in because that's where they're going to go. But what we're really going to focus on are the slots down here. Because that's where this comes in. Okay, we're going to fold this in and then there's four tabs along the top. Fold all those in. Round it off a little bit. Do not attach it just yet. Because what you're going to want to do is get those tabs into these slots 
first. Oh. And make sure the seam matches the seam. And we'll give them a little fold as we go through. Let's get the front two done. It's gonna be the other two done. All right. And with those tabs in, now we'll wanna close the gap here a little bit and get that last tab in. With everything in place, round it out a little bit. And we should be ready to rock and roll. This is where this part comes in. So we're gonna fold these two tabs in, do the top of the thigh here, and we're gonna fold all of these tabs in as well. We'll start with the side that's got the uh, slots here and we'll just roll it in. Remember, we're going to have to overfold in order to get it into those tabs. Perfect. Let's fold those in. Bring these in, same basic concept. And as you're doing it, make sure these two tabs here go into these two slots. Okay, we'll finish it off by rounding it out again. All right, now we got a thigh, a knee, and the top of his calf. There are three tabs on the bottom here. We'll fold these outward, like that. <clears throat> All right, now we've got the boot. Don't know how well it's showing up, but there's a slot here, another one here, and another one here. That's where these three tabs are gonna go. Um, there's also a slot here and here, and then we've got the two tabs on the edge. So we're gonna fold these tabs in. We're gonna give this thing a nice roll. Don't close it up, but you know, nice roll like that. Okay, we're gonna start right here on the front. Go right through the center there. And then we'll come to the back. We'll do the side that's got the slots. All right. Looks like need a little extra roll here. Or maybe a little squeeze. Those tabs were not going in. So let's try that again. 
still not working. Okay. Straighten that tab out. Let's start with this one and then move to the center. Now see, it goes in nice and fine when it's just that one. Now let's see if we can't bring the center in. Right. I don't really have any good advice for this, guys. Um, it's really just a matter of playing with it until you get all three tabs in. Um, these internal slots like this frustrate me every single time. So I would love to be able to give you some tips and tricks or something, but I don't have any. It's just doing your best to make it happen. I have a feeling this is not going to go well because this tab on the front is sadly angling off the wrong direction already. So I have a feeling that tab is going to snap off. I hope not, but let's see, can I get it in there? Come on. Not working. Uh, there we go. It's two. Three. Finally, we got them all slotted in. With all three slotted in, we're going to fold them down so that the painted side of the tab is showing. And now we're going to round off the back of the boot and get those tabs on the back here into these slots. What a pain that was, huh? All right. Now we have his boot in. You can notice there's four tabs on the bottom here. I have a feeling those are going to have to be straightened out a little bit, but we will find out in the next step, I am sure. All right. Well, that said, this is the end of step 10. Moving on to step 11. All right. Looks like step 11 only has one piece. That would be C28 here. Um, we're going to kick things off with the toe, that's this piece here, of the boot. And we're gonna round that out a bit. Okay, now we'll round the front and get that tab into that slot. go. We'll fold it down. Keep it nice and tight. Now, uh, we can bring this around and this tab will go into the other slot on the side of the toe. Just like that. Fold that one down. All right. And if you want, you can bring the toe up a little more with your round stock. 
narrow at the foot. Okay, now for the rest of the foot, there's a little tab here on the front. We're gonna bring that down 90 degrees or so. And that's gonna go into this slot right here. You've also got two slots here, and those will go into these two tabs. So let's round it off a little more, particularly towards the front. And for these tabs, let me go ahead and bring those in as well. And we'll slot that center one in. Bring this down and slot the sole tabs in just like that. Okay, and we can fold all of this to keep it in place as well. All right, now comes the real fun part. See, we're gonna wanna round this off and we're gonna wanna get these tabs into these slots. But we also wanna get the four tabs here into the four slots here. Now the way the instructions show it is we round it off and we seal off the boot right now. And then we try to get these tabs into those slots. I'm not sure that's the best way to go about it. Um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend these tabs in so those are prepped. And I suppose right here, Well, all of these tabs are blue. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these out. A lot like uh, what we did with the top of the boot. Okay. Line these up. Try to get them in, see if this works. I don't know if it's gonna, but I'm gonna try. Okay, I don't know if that was the smartest way and you can see it got me there. Um, but uh, one of these tabs I, I put in uh, inside here and twisted it and then folded it around to get the others in place. Um, it did work. So it is in there, but that is not fun. Not fun at all. Now, if you want, you can bring the base out and you can see where the two places where the feet are going to go are. And I believe this is going to be the right foot. So yeah, it should go here. And if you want some spacing and make sure you got the tabs right, you can, you don't want to attach it of course, but you can uh, slide it in, make sure all the tabs fit in the slots. Look at that, beautiful. So this thing is ready to go. And that, my friends, is the completion of one foot. So for steps 10 and 11, we're going to replicate those with steps 12 and 13. We're going to build the other leg. So I'll be right back when all of that is done. And here we are, two completed legs 
ready to rock and roll and we can move on to step 14. Step 14 has exactly one part. Uh, this is part B33. Um, this is effectively going to be the butt plate. So we've got two curves, uh, a lateral and a vertical. Here, see, it's going to go like this. And then of course, unless you want him to have a very flat butt, go like that. This tab here, we'll go into that slot, this tab into that slot. We'll fold this down, bring this in a little bit, curve it around, pop that puppy in there. Just like that. And then we'll do the same for the other side. All right. Curve this up a bit. <clears throat> okay. And for obvious reasons, this is not gonna be perfect just yet. But the short version is, you got four tabs on one side, four tabs on the other. And lo and behold, four slots here. Uh, and that's effectively how this is going to go. Uh, the smaller one towards the front, that's where that tab starts. And we basically go all the way around. So we're going to have to bring the tabs in a bit to make this work. And I'm going to start here and work my way around. All right, look at that. One side done. And now we basically repeat that for the other side. All right, and there we go. The butt is in place. And we are done with step 14. All right, here we are at the final stage, step 15. Uh, this one's going to be interesting. Um, there are only two parts. We've got part 34 and then part 35 here. 35 is actually going to be very, very easy. You know what? I'll just show that off right now. Uh, effectively, we're going to bend down the edges and occasionally you'll have an edge that's a slot with a little tab that matches. Uh, and we will go ahead and fold that in. Match it up, get that slot in there, boom, boom, boom. Okay, and you can see there's a little gap there, so, and there's a folding spot right there too. So we'll just fold that in just like that so it matches. And we do that all the way around to create the base. All right. And what you're left with is something that looks like this. We've got our copyright on the back and we are ready to rock and roll. Now comes the interesting part. Okay, this is the waist. We've got three tabs and a whole mess of these slots. We got these two tabs here and those will go into these two slots. Now the way they want it done is you basically fold these tabs out this way, out towards the front, and you'll connect those last. And we may end up having to do that. Um, not sure, but for now, we're gonna take these tabs here and fold them in. Let's give it a nice little roll, just so that it's got one and make it a little easier to manipulate later. 
Okay, right here we've got slot, slot, and slot, followed by four tabs. So we're gonna take these tabs, I'm gonna bend those outwards. Excuse me, not four tabs, three tabs, three tabs. Three slots, three tabs. Okay, now we just assemble. Get the tabs in the slots. It's pretty obvious where it goes. And then we follow up with the rest of the tabs going through the slots on the waist. This is a tight fit, guys. This is a real tight fit. Okay, that is on. I actually did attach here. This was a nightmare. Um, these tabs do not want to line up. Nothing, I mean, nothing fits correctly here, to be honest. Um, getting it, just getting it in was an exercise in frustration. Um, it required a lot of manipulation, both of the butt plate and the crotch, as well as, of course, the belt. Uh, absolute pain in the butt. It's in, but we have to get this in too. So we're gonna see how this works. There's five tabs on it. I'm gonna fold them out. There are five slots. I'm gonna do what I can to get these things in. Um, this is gonna require a lot of manipulation and some compression. Uh, and, um, well, if I'm being honest, guys, some hopes and prayers. So, I hope you guys are with me on this and see how lucky I get. All right, um, gonna be honest guys, I am thoroughly shocked I was somehow made able to do that. That was a pain. But with a little compression uh, and a lot of luck, we got all the tabs in there. Uh, his butt is all flat again, uh, but with everything sealed up, there's not gonna be much I can do about that at this point. Um, that's kind of sad, honestly, flat butt Wolverine, but it is what it is. And we're going to bring out our base, four tabs on each foot. We're going to put them into the slots and then do a twist to tie it off. And we are done. Here we are, one Wolverine figure with a very flat butt, ready to rock and roll and defeat the enemies of the X-Men. Or Deadpool, I guess, depending on which movie you're watching. And here he is, Metal Earth Wolverine, fully assembled and looking okay, okay. I've seen worse. Um, he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, he did come together. I would not call this a four difficulty. I'd say it's at least a five, maybe even a six with some of these pieces. Um, it didn't, I mean, some of the engineering just was not particularly good. And there are better ways to do a lot of this stuff. Um, let me go ahead and bring him in and show you what I mean. Okay, so. Uh, here we've got, you know, 
your, your standard figure. And like I said, he, he doesn't look too bad. I did like the way the torso went together. Not a fan of the shoulders. Okay, they could have easily put a disc in there at the shoulder to help with assembly. And they chose not to. I, I don't know why. And the same is really true for the waist. Uh, as well as, you know, the hip joints here. And of course, the, bo the boots at the bottom. You know, some... Uh, uh, just some little discs to go in there and and help with the assembly and make it a little easier it really would have been beneficial it, it would have benefited this figure immensely to have done that I don't know why they chose not to um, the uh, paint job is extraordinary I absolutely love the paint job uh, the paint does not come off very well but uh, it, there's a lot of gapping issues, you know, here and here, uh, over here, of course, down in here and down. All of this stuff is photoshopped over in the product image. So, uh, you know, I hope uh, you're not surprised when you get the final figure out and you got all that gapping. But it is there. Nice action pose. I do like the pose. That's quite nice. Um, the blades are iffy as far as their positioning it's not bad but uh there's not really an opportunity to correct or anything and you can see this one here you know keeps gravity just keeps pulling it down it'd look better if it was here instead of down here could probably fix that with a little super glue if i wanted to uh the head itself went together very very easily except for attaching the head to the neck that was the part where the problems really kind of arose. Uh, but they weren't insurmountable. Uh, a little angular on you know the muscles here because of the way they did it. Um, but not too shabby. And of course we've got a uh, flat butt. No matter how hard I tried, could not get away from flat butt. Eh, well, you know. Is what it is. I mean, he is what in his 60s now. Uh, well, at least Hugh Jackman is. The, the 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 character of Wolverine is what in his hundreds. So who knows? All right. Um, for comparison, he is a smaller figure. Uh, as you can see, here he is next to Darth Vader. So these. Premium scale figures just kind of tower over him. Um, for something more in line, there's Iron Man and War Machine as part of the Marvel line. And that is, you know, more appropriate in terms of scale. Uh, you know, some of it also has to do with the fact that he is in this action pose, but he does have a larger base than the others. But, you know, I think if he were to stand up and have the same size base, he'd be about the same size as these other two. All in all, uh, I'm happy to have him in my collection. Uh, not, not my favorite build. And uh, I want to give a shout out once again and a thank you to Papa and Spirit Wolf 612. I truly hope this video helps you out. And to everyone else, if you like it, Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.